All right, we are here with another episode of DMSK, The Future Of. I'm here with my main man, Navin. Navin, thank you so much for being here, my man. I'm extremely excited to be here in the brand new setup. Listen, I, I want to tell everybody that this is a brand new setup. We, we're not even like... We're like 60% there. We don't even have a pod. We don't even have mic stands. We're we don't even have mic stands here. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to set this up uh, pretty nicely, Navin. Any any tips on how to set up a cool sort of podcast studio? Because I know you got your own setup. Yep. You know, you got the Pokemon. You, 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 you we got, got the like artwork. Artwork in the background. What do you recommend for us here? Like, what are you thinking? I always feel like the artwork ties it together. So I know you have that idea of putting something big back there. I think having one big focal centerpiece will tie this together. Because right now, it's black and gold, which I love. It's minimal, yeah. which I love. And it just looks clean. Yeah. You got little plants. You know, you got some plant action going on here. Treasure chest. Who knows what's inside there? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's cool. Well, we've been shooting a lot of content here for DMSK. <laughs> and obviously, our, our, our branding is like golden and black. Okay. So, we've been, uh, we've been trying here. But, you know, uh, part of this podcast is just touching on really hot topics, touching on some uh, things that are happening in the world, and, and thinking about the future. And I know you're at the intersection of what's happening with the creator economy and NFTs and, and the NBA. And, and I know we've been trying to like figure out how do we get on more pods together yes. because our, you know, our interests intersect so much. Yes. So you know, I'm really excited to you know, ask you a whole bunch of questions here, man. I love it. I love when you're moderating. I love when you're leading it. Because I know there's some good stuff coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I was jealous with your pod because you had all these hot topics. Uh, the PTI, <laughs> the PTI. I, I really love that. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking a, a flavor from that. And, and um, yeah, man, I, I, I want to get into it. Uh, listen, you're, you're such a big proponent of the creator economy. And I know you ask people about the creator economy. With your pod, you have a ton of people that are part of the creator economy. Uh, why are you so excited about the creator economy? I'm excited because it just brings about change. It, the, the last X amount of years have been big companies running everything, Nike, Adidas, and so on and so forth. Now you have one singular individual that can come over and take over everything. Yeah. Mr. Beast, perfect example, and there's so many others. But as a create, so the next 10 years, creator economy is going to blow up. Creators are going to be so many. This is like 50 million, I said the last report was last year. I think we're gonna get 100 million, 100, everyone's gonna be a creator. So for me, I'm excited because as I'm living that and I'm building a brand in the creator economy, the possibilities are endless and you get to be your own boss. I'm a big proponent of being your own boss, being an entrepreneur, no more nine to five, just work whatever you want and live your life the best way you want it to be. The creator economy allows you to do that if you can follow some of the guidelines or some of the things that we're doing, content every day, high quality and so much more. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's funny. I, I recently had a keynote with uh, my former sort of, I guess all, all my mater uh, at Deloitte okay. and you know I was talking to them about the creator economy because I felt like at Deloitte I was part of the creator economy because I was creating content within a big firm and you know I, I started to see the shift between institutions to individuals mm -hmm. and I got a good question at the end of it which was um, do you see uh, everyone succeeding in the creator economy or do you see you know a small percentage of people and I think the reality is, is that a very small percentage of people yeah. will win in this space. So, you know, although everyone's excited about the creator economy, but the reality is, is that not everyone's going to win. 100%. It's doggy dog out there, right? It's just like everything, NFTs and everything, like there's going to be a bubble and not everyone can make it because that's just how the world is. There's not enough space for every single person, but the ones who take it serious, the one who put out the bet, you know, who put their best foot forward and really put time into their content and building an audience they have the, the best chance to make it, just like you're doing. Yeah, so in a sense, there is still a, you know, 90-10, you know, 90-10 effect or 99-1% effect Probably. where, yeah. where you know, 1% of the creator economy will be successful and 99% will float in obscurity or mediocrity, yeah. which is not something that everybody wants to hear, but it, it do, do you think that's going to be the case? It's the harsh reality of life and we're living it every single day. Like... Not everyone can be a millionaire or a billionaire, right? It's the ones that rise to the top that are going to get there. So the same thing but, with the but, greater but, economy. But maybe it's not about the money piece, but maybe it's uh, being w the 1% of people mm -hmm. will be able to do, uh, to, to dedicate their lives and their livelihoods uh, f uh, based on their creative craft. Yeah. I think that's what, it's definitely a small percentage. You're you're hundred percent right. A small percentage will be able to do just that. Yeah, because most people will just still be a hobby and and uh, you know, they'll just kinda of do it on the side. Yeah. I think now, now you you're a creator yourself. Yeah. What do you think is the challenge of 
being a creator in this creator economy today? I think it's just like, it's just navigating what you want to be known for. What you're a creator, right? Like, what do I want to be known for? What type of content do I want to put on? I think for me, it's, it's sometimes it can be a struggle just like everyone else. Like, what do you want to be known for? Like you have all these different TikTok accounts. I'm trying to experiment. I'm trying to learn and understand, but it all comes back to me is, is being an entrepreneur. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, but I'm trying to find like, what is exactly like people are going to watch that I'm putting out just like how you are. We kind of know where it's, it's heading. And I think you're starting to develop that more and more every single day, which is another reason why we're here. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that I love about you is that you are so willing to experiment. Like you'll <laughs> you'll just create like a different TikTok account. You'll just go like just a- dedicated yeah. to NBA Top Shot, and, or you know, d- dedicated to other topics. Like yep. it's it's wild to see your level of experimentation. How do you how do you have the like the audacity or the uh, you know the the gumption to just come up with some of these different ideas and just go off and execute because most people and you know I was I was just with my friends the other day yeah. and it's just like the 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 idea of just coming up with one piece of content is paralyzing enough and here you are you're just pumping and pumping and pumping it's it's unbelievable it's it's really inspiring i think it can become daunting to most people um but i love the challenge like i always call myself a mad scientist just going back in the lab like I, could, I don't I, f- I feel like it wouldn't be right for me to be a part of this brand if I didn't do these kinds of things and especially like for me I want to be able to like educate like Legion and all these guys are an example like I want to be able to do that one day and educate and teach the next creators like how to do it because I did the trial and error I understood how to do it so for me it's fun and a lot of the stuff fails now, you've, you've you know it. you've you've done the same kind of concept I'm sure before too just like not everything's gonna fail but in that process I'm learning how I'm learning so much totally about how it all works right especially with every day a new social media network pops up well and, and and tell me why you want to double down on nba top shot okay i want to double down firstly because i'm a fan i love the game it's backed by nba it's backed by mbpa right so right there that's like the security of like hey putting thousands of dollars into it which you have done as well is like that's my security in my mind but outside of that they're killing it right now so they're first to market dapper labs just raised 350 million dollars and i may be wrong but they raised a crazy amount of money I think like a $2 billion valuation for me. That's the few, this is the future of digital collecting. I collect the Pokemon cards. I'm sure you probably did it as well. I have NBA cards. I have um, NHL cards. I have all that stuff still. But to me, the idea of being able to physically hold not only a card, but a highlight and that highlight is now living on a marketplace where people are buying and selling every single day. That's one of the main reasons like I'm super bullish on it. But you you were also very early in creating content yes. around NBA Top Shot yeah. when, you know, I remember my uh, my friends and I, we were looking at the, what, you know, what are the ancillary businesses off a massive platform like NBA Top Shot, yeah. which is, and one of them is content. Yep. You know, was that one of the reasons why you jumped on early? Like, like there's no one talking about this. So that is one of the reasons. One of the reasons I jumped on is because like we have in the lab, I hate always saying that, but it's like, it's a basketball brand. This is a basketball play. I'm like, it makes complete sense for me as like an entrepreneur trying to try new things. Why would I not dabble in this space? Yeah. And you hit it on the head. So I've interviewed a bunch of content creators in this space. Like all the, all all the, all the leaders basically. Basically. And I got another one tomorrow, Jen Sudo. She's coming on tomorrow. It's like, I'm connecting and building relationships with them because, and they tell me the same thing every single day. And I tell them the same, like, there's only a handful of us. So like right now we all have the best opportunity to actually make something out of NBA Top Shot as it grows. Cause like, as you know, there's not many people in NBA Top Shot yet. No, exactly. It's just at the brink of like really exploding. So yeah, I want to put myself out there. I want to make content, but I want to make good content. That's why I'm experimenting with like your type of show, like with the PTI and then now going back to like more of a podcast vibe. I'm just trying to see like, what do people want to watch? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's unbelievable that you've been able to, you know, get all these, great content creators around NBA Top Shot being so yeah. early and yeah. and you know yourself and folks like Jen and the First Mint you know LG, all these yep. folks are going to be you know massive in in about five years because they were early to the game and yeah. we see this every single technology platform that comes out or any single you know uh, I guess bubble mm-hmm. you know the, the ones that create content early and are early to the game you know they they obviously they have to stay consistent but yes. you know they rise to the top so yeah. it's kind of you're building these um, unbelievable relationships and I, I think it's great so i want to ask you because a lot of people ask me about this nba top shot 
is that the the marketplace has dipped for yeah. every single person. Yeah. I know you've been deep into that. So what are, what what's some things that you tell your uh, friends and 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 family when you're talking about NBA Top Shot? And they're like, well, all my value has dipped over the last number of months. Just like the stock market, stay strong. Um, it's starting to even out. Like things are starting to like balance it, itself out in terms of prices and all that kind of stuff. And I just like feel like there's always bulls, right? The bulls are coming in. They're buying at the major moments. And then a lot of them actually getting scared and listing and selling and getting out of it, right? And that causes the market to fluctuate. So for me, it's just simple. Don't leave. Yeah. Hold it for them. If you love, I just say, if you, like, a bunch of friends, we have a little mini group chat. If you guys love NBA, stop asking me. Get the moments you like, get the players you exactly. want. We can talk about that, but just hold it. There's no need to sell anything right now because we don't know the potential. Exactly. Right? Well, 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 a lot of people have treated this as a, a way of making money as opposed to as opposed to collecting highlights and being a fan of the NBA. Mm -hmm. So if you're sour that things have gone, you know, uh, lower or your, your investments have not panned out, then you're probably not in it for the right reason. Exactly. So, but just like anything else, so um, they already launched like a Moto GP UFC is coming. The same concept will apply there. People are going to come in just to like hold the moments and hopefully get a quick payday. And that makes it tougher for the collectors who like are just fans of it and want to hold this for 10 years. Like this is off topic. Something I'm excited for is like Jordan was an investor. Yeah. I know something's Ooh, coming. Oh baby. We okay. know something's coming Absolutely. for MJ. So I'm just telling people like, yo, like we, some of the moments on the marketplace suck. Let's just be honest. Right. We don't want, oh, I mean, I'd say 90%. You're not going there. and buying a thousand moments. Right. Cause you don't, you don't, uh, you're not happy with all, you don't love all the players and different things. Right. But now you can have MJ come out. You're gonna Absolutely. have a bunch of like big investors. Like it's just a tip. Of the wait, wait, wait for MJ's. You know, wait for some of MJ's iconic, like the the uh, you know even the dunk competition. You know, like the there's so many. There's so many. It's gonna be unbelievable. <laughs> um, so g give me one piece of advice that you would give for somebody that wants to get into NBA Top Shot, but they feel mm -hmm. like it's been you know, the hype is gone and they're yeah. not going to be able to, you know, catch up. Like it's, it's already done. Yeah. Just, uh, same thing. I told some of my friends, just get your feet wet. Take, if you have a, everyone's money's different, right? Everyone has a different amount of money in their bank account that they can give away to random things. If you have a couple hundred dollars that can get you a bunch of moments or can get you maybe a couple of de decent ones. There's tons of series ones moment out there that are like 80, 70 bucks. You can go buy three right now. Yeah. So what I tell my friends, one of my friends just got in yesterday. I was like, look, take a hundred dollars, add it to your dapper balance. If you do, or if not, just buy it on credit card and screenshot me five or six moments you're going to want to buy right now. You picked like a $7 moment, a $20 moment, a $50 moment. I'm like, perfect. Buy them, get your feet wet. And let's like, let's just see what happens from there. That's it. Yeah. You know, one of the things I wanted to do is, is call my, my boy. Uh, his name yes. is, uh, his name is, uh, Ahmad. He actually got me into NBA top shot. Okay. He was like one of the first guys in he's, uh, uh -oh. he, I, I don't want to, I don't want to reveal his, uh, standing, but he's like top 200 in the world when it comes to NBA top shot holdings. Oh. So he's a, I, is he a whale? Uh, I would say he's, I, I would say he's a whale. He's been, he's been, okay. he's been attracting everyone to the space. Like he's, he's deep, deep, deep into this. So I'm just gonna get him. This. I'm just gonna get him on the pod right now because, you know, I, I want to get his insight. When I go to NBA Top Shot, I go to Ahmad and um, Ahmad, <laughs> how are you, brother? Listen, uh, you're not gonna be able to see me. I'm gonna put you up to the camera, okay? I'm here with my boy, uh, Navin. Navin is uh, a content creator when it comes to NBA Top Shot, and uh, I I want to just have have you on for two minutes, uh, talking to 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 the to the group about NBA Top Shot because you're the OG man. You're the legend when it comes to this space, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm the OG. Four months long, <laughs> three months <laughs> OG. There you go. So listen, um, I was just telling the group that you are probably you're ranked like number two hundred, right, in the world when it comes to NBA Top Shot, uh, in terms of your holdings. Yeah, around there. Yeah. Yeah. So you're so around two hundred, and you know, Emmett, I, I asked the same question to Navin, which was, most of the people have been worried because their investment has decreased significantly since it started. So what is your advice to people that are like, you know, this is, uh, the, the, the game is over? Yeah, um, I think the advice is to be patient and to really look at the big picture and consider why you're investing or why you're buying it in the first place. Um, and there's just a few different things that are coming in the future that I could see could spark it. 
One is the hard court game that's going to mm-hmm. actually add utility to these moments. So I think that's going to sort of change the game. And I'm hoping that they'll, you know, provide greater value to lower serial numbers because that's what the community has been valuing. Hopefully that actually relates to the utility. Um, also, you know, it's still in beta. It's still very early. So once it gets out, that's another kind of realization moment that could spark things. Um, the other thing, too, is they don't have any marketing going on right now. They just hired a marketing head from the NFL. Yep. So once they get that going, they're hopefully – ramp up user growth and get the right kind of users because right now it's a lot of flippers and people maybe not necessarily believing in the platform but they just see a a quick buck so we need more collectors um, who really want to own these moments and really grasp that like we're owning NBA history Um, so yeah I'd be patient I mean to be you know not financial advice but I've been sort of buying the dip because um, I kind of see the long term value and um, it's so early Um, and I think some of the reasons why it dropped is because they stopped user signups. So that was kind of top shot generated. Um, they not marketing, they stopped that. So a lot of these kind of levers that top shot has their power to control, they can switch on once they get out of beta that hopefully will kind of switch things in a different direction. I notice it's a lot of momentum in this. It's either going up or going down and um, it might just take something to flip for it to go in the other direction. Um, but I think for people who joined at the at the peak, it is definitely rough because you know down like over fifty percent at this point. But I guess if you do believe in it long term, then now might be actually a good chance to buy some of the stuff that was super expensive so, uh, so, when you first joined. So Navin, you have any questions for the for the whale here uh, on <laughs> on his holdings? And by the by, by the way, your number one holding is a Kyrie, right? You you got like a thirty thousand dollar Kyrie. Yeah, it's a Kyrie <laughs> Hollow handles. Um, MMXX, so it's like 2020 uh, Series 1. And I got that because, you know, Kyrie is widely known as like having the greatest handles on planet Earth. Yep. Um, and Hollow MMX is one of their core, like, legendary sets. So I thought, and it was just a really nice highlight. So I thought it would be a great long term investment, especially with Kyrie's like global popularity, especially with like young people and overseas. Um, so I thought it was a sound investment. And if the Nets like win the title this year, which, of course, they're one of the favorites, that could also uh, increase his profile if he hits another shot like he did against the Warriors. I just want to say, as, as a geek of NBA Top Shot, uh, it's an honor to have you in this room with us, <laughs> especially Top 200. That That's wild. So, obviously, I'm assuming that's... Is that your favorite moment? Because like, my question was be, what is your favorite moment in your collection right now? Yeah, I'd say my favorite moment is actually a semifinals one, OG Ananobi from last oh. year's playoffs against the Celtics, Game 3. You know, they're down 2-0 in the series, um, and 0.5 seconds left, down to uh, Kyle Lowry, you know, cross-court pass to OG, catches it, and then tosses it and throws a three. And uh, I wish they got a bit more of his reaction in the moment, but I just kind of remember where I was and kind of, as a Raptors fan, my moral was down and uh, and my, 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 my kind of energy was down. But as soon as he hit that, I was just, like, blown away. Unfortunately, he's still lost, but... And I love OG. He's kind of like a baby Kawhi in terms of his demeanor. And um, I think he's kind of breaking out this year. So that's definitely one of them that is kind of connected to an experience in my life. So that's why it has more about a more Uh, kind of emotional tie for me. And Ahmed, last question, because then I want you to get a spicy you about this because you're being so proper and you're being so, because I know you're a business, you know, you're you're a businessman. You got multiple businesses. And um, tell me this. Aren't you pissed off at all these people that think that this is a, uh, you know, this is all about hype. This is, uh, this is uh, YouTube. You can get this shit off YouTube. Like, aren't you angry? I'm actually not angry because it, it kind of like gives me fuel when people don't get it. Because I 100% get it and I 100% believe it's real. And it's just a matter of time before the world gets it. So it just kind of actually encourages me and highlights like how early we are that not everybody gets it not everybody sees the future um but i don't know it's it's, it's, there's a lot of uh, hypocrisy from folks like that like people who are into sports cards you know where's the value i can watch this on youtube well it's like bruh like i could buy a wayne gretzky replica card or his rookie card for ten dollars on youtube right now does that uh, sorry on ebay right now does that mean you know if i buy a wayne gretzky rookie card on ebay replica for 20 bucks like does that mean i have a two million dollar card no i could you know get it on my wall, print it out. 
doesn't change it. it at the end of the day it's a store of value and because it has that licensed product from the MBA that's what kind of gives me the gives the cachet um, I have personally like have been hesitant to dive into other NFTs um, because I just think top shots sort of the cream of the crop and MBA culturally is kind of top uh, top level and it's also yeah. series one MBA is going to always be known as like the first one to kind of capture the minds of the mainstream you got it right now Ahmad, you 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 uh, you spoke. I I want you, I want to I want to introduce you to Navin too because Navin's creating amazing content around NBA Top Shot. So I, I hope that you guys got get connected after this. But I, I thank you for jumping on the pod, man, and and uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll chat soon, brother. Sounds good, brother. Take care. Okay, buddy. All right. Take easy, okay. buddy. Nice meeting you, buddy. Likewise, man. That's my buddy Ahmad. And, and, and the reason why I want to call Ahmad is because Ahmad he got me into this space. He he kept on texting me. He's like in December. He's like. Dang, boom, dude. boom, boom, boom. He he kept. He's like, I got this, I got this. I'm like, okay, cool. I was, I'm like with family right now, and I can't like, you know. And then I got into. I'm like, whoa, I saw it. Yeah. I, I after I got my first pack, I saw it, and then I I regret not going as heavy as he did at the beginning. Like he went heavy, yeah. and he saw it, and he just like he he said in this, which was, like people don't see the future, and that's that's exactly it. That's the advantage we have, hopefully. Yeah, no, I so so on that note, you know, obviously talked about NFTs yep. and and uh, have you been paying attention to what's happening on from an F NFT perspective, um, you know, outside of NBA Top Shot? Yeah, there's a lot. We're trying to develop our own. A lot of hundred thieves today just dropped their first NFTs. Um, the one I'm super in interested in right now is Zed Run. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's digital horse racing. Oh, okay, okay so yeah. a lot of celebrities. Wilson Chandler is famously in it now. You know, ex NBA guy. And it's just interesting because like a lot of these NFTs are obviously going to fail, but you have like this digital horse thing where horses are going for like a couple hundred to 10,000 plus dollars for a digital horse. And the tweets you're seeing are like the people who get the horses are up, up at night and they're watching the horses race and it's like adrenaline rush. And I'm just like, man, we, we don't even understand yet the possibilities behind wait, wait, there's a genius b building the platform. You know what stuff that we could like do with NFT. So, anyways, I'm I'm deep into it, long winded, but I'm deep. Yeah, yeah, no, I I I'm I'm excited. You know, it, are we in a bubble though? Are we in an NFT bubble? <sighs> There's conflicting thoughts. Obviously, I, I read an article I think at least once a day about some expert talking about this, and I just think it's similar to the creator economy. Like, not every NFT business and yeah. platform is going to last. It's going to be a small percentage of them, and you have to be able to understand and find which like which are the MVPs. That's what it's going to come down to. Yeah. Like, is Zed run an MVP for me? I'm not going to spend 10 Gs on a digital horse because I've never been to horse racing. But I'm seeing guys that I know put big money because they know that sport. So it's just kind of, I think you're picking and choosing, right? I, in my opinion, I think we're absolutely in an NFT bubble. I think the hype is just been unbelievable and even people who who yeah. had his um uh you know his jpeg yeah. uh you know sold at christie's for 69 million he even Crazy. says that we are in a bubble uh but i think what people don't get is the underlying technology around nfts and and how it can apply to other industries how it can apply to other sectors other businesses and I think we're just at a starting point. And you're right. You know, 99% of the people that mint their own NFTs, I mean, they're, they're going to fall in obscurity. They're going to be mediocre. And the 1% of people that actually put in the time and they have a great story around their NFTs will do well. And that's what you're seeing right now is, is those that have spent the time uh, to build the story around yes. it have won. And that's why you see a lot of even big creators, they, tr they understand that we need to collaborate with folks that are in the NFT space or in the uh, crypto space in order for us to, uh, you know, make these things valuable. So absolutely, we're in a bubble. Yeah. We're in a bubble. Yeah. No. But 100%. I, but like, just like the internet, uh, you know, we didn't see the fruits of the internet. You know, the the, the internet boom sort of went haywire yeah. in the late '90s, and then it crashed, and then people saw the the the, the power of the technology, yeah. and then. You know, it is what it is today, right? Hundred percent. It's kind of. It's also similar, like to Bitcoin, just cryptocurrency, right? So, like, we haven't fully realized like what's going on yet. And just to speak to that point, there's a lot of creators in different businesses. Like, it's a bull rush right now because they have seen. That's you're right. It's a, it's a bubble, but they're just seeing that. Hey, I can potentially make a million dollars or ten thousand dollars off nothing. Yeah. And they're throwing it out there, and that's what's saturating the market and causing it tougher for like creators who want to build a story to try and put something out. So that's why. I love what 100 Thieves did today. Just real quickly, they told the story behind it. 
educated before they drop the NFT. Like, what is this? Why are we doing it? Here's the reason. Here's only like two or three. And they put it out to the audience. Yeah. No, no I, I, I love that. And um, um, I'm going to be minting my own NFT very soon, actually. I look we're, forward we're, to that. We're doing something really, really cool next week. Okay. We're just getting all the confirmation sort of ready to go. I don't want to drop it too early on the on the pod, but it is going to blow everybody's mind. It is literally going to be the most spectacular uh, keynote presentation that I've ever done. I can't wait. And, and um, there's going to be an NFT sort of associated to it. So I, I can't wait to, to drop it. It's going to be really exciting. Um, I, you know, the, 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 the thing around NFTs, though, has really been about, I guess, digital art right that's been mainly that's the, the mainstream. Yep. mainly the uh the mechanism that most people are in obviously nba top shot and then art um i have this notion that digital is going to usurp every industry so i'm saying digital sports like esports yep. it might be bigger than sports yep. uh you know we see bitcoin uh at, at some point will it p replace fiat currency uh digital art will be more valuable than Via physical art. Now, the the question is, will digital real estate be more than you know actual real estate? I mean, th th these are interesting questions, and I think now that we live so much through our phone, yep. is it is is this is this the future? I'm betting big on on digital. I think you are too. Um, the digital land play is like super in interesting to me. I don't like get that part yet. I know we. I just think I shared an article with you a long time ago. This guy paid a million dollars for digital land, which is like super interesting. But digital merch, digital avatars like that Genies is creating, I think that's like the next future. Like it's like we're not going to – there's a lot of people right now who are more inclined to spend money on a digital avatar, like similar to Fortnite and all these games where they're buying skins every single day. Imagine if they have a digital avatar of themselves and that lives in a digital world you know, with all their other friends. They're going to want to spend so much money on the little brands and merch that's coming out for them. So anyways – I'm betting huge. Okay, on, man. On listen, you That's heard it here first. <laughs> Navid is betting huge on digital. He's going to be buying all the digital land. Uh, <laughs> I hope I can know, afford it. Out there. No, I, I think it's really fascinating. And I think we're just at the uh, first innings of it. And the reason why I know that digital is going to be a big thing is that if you look at kids today, I mean, the way that they play Fortnite and Roblox, like ask a kid today. You know, I asked my niece. You know, she's she's uh, she's not a teenager yet, but she's she's on Roblox. She's She's on Fortnite, and I asked her, like, for her birthday, do you want, uh, like, would you want a shirt or uh, Roblox? Robux? She's like, Robux. Do you want, uh, like, a toy this? She was like, Robux. Every, everything they goes back to Robux. Yep. And it's wild that they would rather want something digital than something physical. something physical. I mean, so I already see it, and that's why, you know, I told my wife, I'm like, let's go into Roblox because – Roblox because in terms of the stock because yep. the, the, that's just the future yep. right so I, I think it's been really interesting uh, listen I want to hit I want to hit some uh, hot topics at you today uh, uh, first of all because you're so deep into the NBA space I, I want to ask you about Paul Pierce I don't know if you saw uh, Paul Pierce's Instagram live where yep. uh, he was doing some questionable things with some uh, females in the background yep. and it dropped uh, yesterday that last night that he got fired from yep. ESPN. They parted ways because of his IG live. What, what's your quick take on Paul Pierce and his IG live uh, incident? The quick take is Paul Pierce is wild. He's wild for even doing that as a professional. Um, I don't want to speak too much on it, but I know that a lot of people didn't even like him as a commentator anyway. So I right. think some people are like rejoicing like, Oh, he's off. This is great. Let's replace him with another NBA player. Um, I just think it's hilarious. That it happened to be, Paul Pierce. Yeah. Out of so many ex NBA players, I just I just think it's hilarious that it's him. Just knowing him and his personality and who he is as an NBA player, it was just too funny to watch, man. Do you think in another decade that there's no way he would have got fired for that? Like there's no way that he would have do you think that we're just in a Good climate question. right now where it's just you know, obviously it's inappropriate. It's not professional. Yeah. It's not he doesn't represent ESPN. You know that's not 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 a good representation of ESPN. Yeah. Uh, I I'm not sure what the situation was with with those females and and if he knew them or not. I would assume that he didn't. <laughs> um, I'm assuming his wife didn't know the females <laughs> either. Uh, it's just not a good look. But do you think in a different generation, like we just would have been laughing and and you know he just he would have been went on the next day and would have said, hey, sorry guys, that was a crazy night. Anyways, 
in his head, that's probably what he was hoping and thinking. Um, no, I, I think he was he was sauced. Like, I don't <laughs> think he was thinking anything that night. That's also another good point. I would love to see that in a few – as we grow in generations, like, you know, evolve, like, thinking does change. But I think no matter what, that situation, even if it's 50 years from now, I can't see that being an acceptable situation. I can see certain things, but that one was pretty wild from yeah. someone who has – because he has such a big following and he's on TV. There's so many things going into it with brand deals and whatnot. It makes it tough. Now – you know, there, there's something to be said that on regular cable, if you watch, for example, the Grammys and, and mm-hmm. you know, y- y- you see what Megan, who I love, Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B, you know, yeah. they're doing some really edgy stuff on stage, Very. right? And let's say, I think I saw heard Chris Broussard saying this, like, what if you had that in the background on television while, um, while, while you know, you're on IG Just Live? Is it different? I mean, it is different, but I, I want yeah. to get your perspective. It's funny because that's actually a really good point because it, it is different, but it's it's almost like the same thing, especially with how WAP and some of these videos are so like out there, like show WAP to my mom. She almost like dropped the phone. She was like, what is this? Like, what are you watching? Because like they don't understand. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Did you did you say that you showed WAP oh, yeah, to your got, mom? We got to be progressive. You got to show <laughs> <laughs> you gotta show what's happening in the world, man. Oh you know? my god! You gotta, you gotta let big thing like with my with with our parents is like we want them to try to grow with times. Like getting them a Yo, phone. Yo, man, was you tough have enough. the most progressive <laughs> mom I've ever heard in my life. That you would show WAP to my mom. Once I this is a true story, but once I I uh, I took my mother. I didn't even know this, but it was my wife, my my mother, and my brother, and we took her to Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. And I don't even remember Wolf of Wall Street, but the I first, do. like, t- five, ten minutes, yeah. it's basically a porno. Yep. And I'm sitting there beside my mom, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and you sh- and you just openly showed WAP to your mom. Okay, that's pretty bold. It's progressive, man. You got, you got, I got to let her know what's going on. I got to keep her up to date with the okay. times. With everything, okay, okay. You know? I love it, man. <laughs> I love it. I'm into it. <laughs> I but, wish my kids showed me WAP, to be honest with you. <laughs> hey, Dad, <laughs> this new video, WAP. Come check it out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's crazy to think. I'm not going to dive into it right now because I know we got other topics, but it's crazy to think about that the next generation of m- not just females, but also like guys, young young age, yeah. are growing up watching Cardi B and Make the Stallion do all this stuff on stage and then practice it at home and then make TikToks about it and literally are influencing the entire culture. Yeah. But nothing's really being said about it. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, you're you're right that it is it is influencing culture, and it is it is. I I, I can't explain it, but you know, getting back to the the Paul Pierce thing, yep. I, I at the end of the day, you're saying you, you know he 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 did the wrong thing. He should have got fired. It's just not the time, place, climate at this point. It's not, and I don't want to get too into it, but it's like you have to understand when you're professional, even a creator. If you have a check mark and you're doing certain things and you have a public eye on you, okay. So let, let, let me pivot the conversation sure. then to uh, to Kevin Durant. <laughs> you saw the the interaction between Michael Rapaport yeah. and Kevin Durant, where Kevin was getting really salty in the DMs to yeah. Michael Rapaport. And by the way, let me tell you, Michael Rapaport, he, he he every time I see him, he's always spouting off on somebody. Like he he loves like just upping the ante he loves just talking shit to people yep. and so you know i wasn't surprised yeah so what, what what what's your opinion on that piece that kevin durant you know he came in with some really crazy things i mean he said some really you know inappropriate things <laughs> yeah i'm not defending anyone here he got fined 50k i think today or yesterday for yep. it i don't think the dm i always feel like if there's things going on in the back end, like don't air it out. I don't think Michael should have aired it. I think he actually went on and said that he should have never just aired out the DMs. Like just have the conversation between you guys and keep it behind closed doors. But I'm not going to, I'm not defending anyone, whether it's right or wrong. It's just like, that's one conversation, right? There's millions of those happening every totally. day behind closed doors. that us as the general public have no idea about, and they're way worse than that. I can only imagine. So it's like, I don't know, man. It's, it's tough. I just wish I love Michael. He's an OG actor and all that kind of stuff. I just wish he didn't put it out, and they were able to handle it behind closed doors. But also, Kevin Durant, super outspoken, burner account. All he's done all kind of stuff in the past. So yeah. it's not like it's. It didn't take me or like our group of basketball guys to talk about it by surprise that that's how he was responding. Yeah, it 
it, it, I guess in Kevin Durant's case, does it sh- does it showcase that he's a real person? Does it showcase that he's a, you know, it, he's not too dissimilar to maybe some people that we know? Yeah. And there were some tweets of people saying that, like, hey, this makes him seem like one of us. This gives, like, they're basically, like, backing him up saying, like, just leave the guy alone. This is how any of us would have talked, which is, like, a point. Like, you just said, like, he is kind of like us. Like, because how many NBA guys or any celebrity would reply like that? Maybe they, they would have just left it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I agree. I think Kevin Durant is, he's human. He's obviously he's very human. sensitive. Yeah. He's very sensitive. Yeah. Uh, the things that he said were definitely inappropriate. Uh, you know, I think understanding the context of the conversation and the banter that they have with one another, like if they're always like just, you know, just, just jabbing at each other, yeah. you know, that, that that's something. But yeah, I know it's super, super crazy. I, I, I you know, I, I just wanted to piggyback on the on the Paul Pierce. Thing <laughs> I love the that. transition. It's perfect. Uh, want to ask you about something today that I saw was trending on Twitter which was Kim Kardashian is finally, Forbes has finally crowned her as a billionaire. And I wanted to get your thoughts on what you think about that. Like, is it, you know, a lot of people have said that Kim Kardashian has no talent and she doesn't deserve to be a billionaire no. or she, you know, she's gotten, you know, the sex tape sort of gave her everything that she has. But what are your thoughts on Kim Kardashian being crowned today as a billionaire, a billionaire. by Forbes? I just think that whole family is a bunch of creative geniuses. No matter what you say about them, sex tape aside, reality show aside, they know how to do business. Look at Kylie. She's another perfect example. Kendall also kills it, but she's just not doing at the level of them. But like, I think it's been a long time coming for Kim to reach that status because she has so much going on. And the thing about the public eye is they only see what they want to see. So they may see her crying on keeping up with the Kardashians or they may see her and Kanye break up in some drama, but they're not looking at the back end of like what she's actually doing as an entrepreneur and a business wise. And her skims company kills. I know because I know females try to get the stuff. But every time they go on the website, it's sold out. So, so what about the narrative that she has no talent and that she 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 came into this game because of the Ray J sex tape? Uh, would you say that she she must she must have talent? Look, she she has to have talent. She has to have some type of smarts and especially like some kind of business mind. Even if, let's say, Chris is leading 50% of it or whatever it is, because I think her mom is probably like the entire mastermind of everything from what I've seen and heard, she still knows what she's doing, man. Absolutely, yeah. She's a, she's a fashion icon. She's a business icon. She knows how to get people to do things on Instagram through her posts and different comments. She knows how to sell. So you can't tell me over the last X amount of years, she, I, don't, I don't know, she may be 40 right now. So she's 40. She's been doing this for, what, like, 20 years? Yeah, no, like, I, I agree with you. I think uh, Kim Kardashian today being a billionaire on Forbes – uh, just certifies her as like one of the greatest of all time. She created yep. this. So she created the creator economy movement, the influencer movement. I, I guess mm-hmm. Paris Hilton might have been the first, but she created it, and and she <laughs> uh, created the foundation for so many other influencers. Uh, she has created ancillary businesses around what she's done. Yes. Um. And the fact of the matter is, she is talented. She's a marketing genius. She 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 has solidified herself over. A decade plus. Yeah, a this long is not time. a. This is this is a long time. She's been at at the top of a game for a very long time. How long have we been talking about Kim Kardashian? Yeah. Like I, I don't know, like two thousand seven. School for us. It's like, like it's like long. thirteen, like, like fifteen years that she's been in the game, and then, you know, the the other person that has been in the game that long is LeBron and Drake. <laughs> so like. The fact that she's not a flash in the pan, she's been yeah. in the game for so long. Like you gotta, you gotta give her the props. At at the beginning, it was funny, right? She was Paris Hilton's sidekick, yes. and now she's become her own person, her and own and she she should be uh, applauded for her work and her businesses. I mean, there are six; they're real businesses. Look, there's there's gonna be a Kim Kardashian book one day, and I'll buy it the first day it drops. There you go. I want to know. What she did, I want to know the story behind how she built a billion dollar empire. And at the end of the day, all that matters. And like I said, cr- give, give her credit because she made a billion. That's all that matters. Nothing else should be looked at. She got on the list. She has X amount on her bank account and she did it. So we got to give her props. Uh, yeah. I, and, and, and I and I, I, I wish we had somebody else on the pod that would have a, a negative, a negative, a negative, you know. Yeah. And and I think the only thing that they would say is that it was because of the sex tape. But isn't it that we all we we all start from somewhere, right? And yes, the the, the sex tape gave her the yes. boost. 
But I would argue this, that because she started as a sex tape, the the the, the yeah. re I mean that's even more reason yeah the more reason that she should be applauded she started with a sex tape exactly how many people have sex tapes and they are where they are today and they branch out to so many different things it, I don't think I actually don't think anyone has done it I would go on record maybe I, I highly doubt anyone's done that yeah I I, I gotta to watch all the I gotta watch all the sex tapes <laughs> to to review I'm not sure if Elon had a sex tape I'm 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 waiting to see Jeff Bezos had a sex tape I'm not sure. But <sighs> that should be more reason to applaud her yes. that she went from a sex tape to a billionaire and been yep. relevant for a, a, so a decade long. plus. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. And she's going to keep being relevant, and that's even more reason to keep putting her on that pedestal. Like, she's done it. She she's achieved it. And something random I want to say before I forget, because you brought up Paris Hilton. And I, I forget, but she's been involved. She's involved a lot of NFT stuff. So we need to watch out what's happening with Paris because there may be some kind of resurgence. Yeah, okay. you, you know Paris Hilton, I felt was she was too early almost in the game, but she did start the influencer movement. Yeah, I mean she was the first Long one with, ago. for example, no talent to you know she was being uh, uh, hounded by paparazzi yeah. early, and this was pre Insta everything, and uh, yeah, pre everything, and they would talk about her all the time. Like she was like the OG of this whole thing, and then obviously Kim Kardashian was her sidekick, and yeah, I mean I. I, I I saw that you know uh, Paris Hilton is getting more into Bitcoin and and she's uh, getting into NFTs and, and and I think that's like I, I saw some tweets that now the thing has crashed and whatnot but listen Paris Paris has started lots of things yeah. I mean we, we we laugh it I don't even know what that quote is from like Gandhi where they're like you know first you laugh and then you whatever and yeah. Then, then you're, I don't. What is that? Quote? We need to pull that exact. Quote we need up. to pull that, pull that. Quote. I looked at. I looked at Neve like she was gonna have it ready for some reason. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we, she's like Jamie on Joe, uh, Joe, Joe <laughs> yeah. Rogan right now. Uh, no, but I, I'm glad. I'm glad that um, she's getting the applause from us for both of us. I mean, 90, 98 percent of uh, Twitter probably hates her, but, yeah. but, uh, but, uh, yeah. No, shout out to her. Now, uh, I wanted to ask you a couple questions, really about your. Um, I want to ask you about your style. Okay. I think it's something that people, uh, you probably don't get asked a lot because of all your content. Uh, because you always look so fresh. What <laughs> I is where? The where do you get the inspiration for your style? Like wh where? Where are you shopping? Are you shopping online? Are you on IG? Are you following like GQ? Like what are you? What are you doing? Uh, because I need to. I I I, I need on, a man. I, you, I need a got, copy. You have paste. some nice fits. You have some nice fits. Don't well, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to up it a little bit, but. So look, first of all, I don't even dress that nice. I just dress like a, like a hooligan from Mill Woods. But, um, big inspiration is Kith, like Ronnie Fig. Yeah. Um, I have a ton of their stuff. I just stay like we have a technically a fashion brand. It's a basketball brand. We, we yeah. make clothes. So like I'm always staying up to date with the trends from all the big brands, but Kith, uh, um, hundreds. You know, like a uh, stable pigeon, like Jeff. Like I keep yeah, up with. I have them. no idea what he's talking about right now. So Don't worry. Hopefully, someone no. at home, someone <laughs> watching this, knows these brands. But iconic streetwear brands. Yeah, I have all of it in my closet. Um, but now as I've gotten older, I progress to a more like simple, clean, no logo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. type of fit. My shoes might be loud, but that would be a, kind of the only thing. Maybe like the watch and stuff. But otherwise, like, I'm. It's funny because like I evolved from like this Millwood Street streetwear vibe where like if you saw me be like there's no way this this is that, that kid to now it's like clean cut like trying to like you know have a have a nice blazer a nice bomber jacket like clean cut tee yeah no yeah. logos and it's just minimalistic man like i try to when i get ready it's like how can i look as good as possible but with as minimal styling as possible if that makes sense yeah no, i know i i feel like that's been a trend in fashion to it to has you know less logos less yep. like just way more minimal like you go to most stores and and that's you know that's what they you know that's what they have yep. is, is more minimal you know fashion to me is fascinating because we almost we use fashion to uh distinguish our identity right we we, we, we it, it represents us yeah but at the same time when you go somewhere they have five of those different things and like you know it's we're we're still we don't want to be too far off, yeah. But we want to be just a little bit slightly over the edge. I find it interesting because it's like we we, we still want to fit in at the end of the day, yeah. Right. We 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 still want to be part of society, 
and but yet we still want to be unique at the same time it's it's always this interesting it's balance, balance right? right it's a balance so f for you um what are some things you, you mentioned the shoe right yeah. and obviously because of in the lab you guys are you guys are you guys are actually manufacturing shoes um I'm not into the shoe game, and I, I feel like I'll, I'll get just shit from H and M and like you know like Zara. Yeah. I'll just pick it up, like no logo. Like, w what is it about shoes that that the world has gone crazy over? Like the sneaker revolution. We could have a whole podcast about this, but like sneakers are just like either you hold it dear to your heart or you don't. Yeah, and right? I don't. And you know it's a cult following, just yeah. like kind of like NBA Top Shot is and Goat and all these apps. Like those are cult followings. For me, and actually, I just got Ambika, like my wife, into this. Is like, it's a bad habit. Yeah. But every week, we're opening up Goat and just seeing, like, okay, hey, we're trying to get these these Jordan ones. We're always trying to get matching pairs. So it's like, how do we like pull? pull you know, how do we make this happen? So, anyways, the whole sneaker thing, man, is like, I grew up. I've had a crazy sneaker collection when I was in high school. Like, where mom, my my mom was like hitting me, like, it, it's time, like, it's time to get rid of this and donate. And I'm talking like over 200 pairs of shoes in in a wow. room wow so like i've had i went through that stage of that obsession of like i want to have the jays the nikes the new kicks that drop and then now it's progressed to okay i'm a grown man let's take a step back <laughs> i got a couple pairs a couple pair of yeezys i got a couple pair of like pharrell nmds and like some holies and just some like nice air jordans but my collection is like 10 15 and that's like my rotation so i it's, it's grown grown from like that and a lot of sneaker collectors say this when they first started it's like money who cares about money we're kids we want the hottest sneakers possible to now being a grown man with bills and utilities and all these kind of things coming up. It's like we've refined our style. So now in my head before I had like every color shoe possible. Mm. I didn't know what style was when I was in high school. Now I understand, okay, if I have a white pair of shoe, that's going with half my outfits, a black pair of kicks, just like that one, black pair of kicks going with the other half. Then you mix it up with the co the holies and like some of the more vibrant colors like this. Got a collection. You got a collection. So um, obviously, you know this. You know, I, I although I'm not a sneaker collector, I understand. I obviously see the revolution. Sure. I see people collecting it. I know the economics around it. Yep. It's unbelievable. Like I have the Goat app. I take a look at it. And I, you know, it, it, it. You know, I, w I remember we went to New York with, with with the boys, and literally for like four days. You know, New York is like the greatest place to go. Well, obviously, we've been there before, but like we literally spent four days like looking for sneakers. Like it was really? like the only thing that we did was like look for sneakers, <laughs> which is wild. And but. Where, where do you think this is going? Because, you know, post COVID, most people have been spending their time at home. Uh, you know, this whole podcast is called The Future Up. W where do you think the sneaker revolution is going to go post COVID? Like, are we going to focus more on what you have on your shoes when you we, we can't see most people? I mean, everybody's like more, more and more people are going to be at home, right? They're not going to be out and about. Or maybe that that means even more uh, obsession over shoes. What where, where, where do you think that's going to go? I think that's like a really good question. Um, the first thing I'll say is I'm still going to bet big on digital and that everything is going to be digital for your avatar extremely soon. So instead of buying shoes for ourselves, we're going to be f buying the freshest kicks possible for our virtual reality avatar. Digital sneakers. Digital sneakers. So di it's already happening. Digital yeah. sneakers, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, they're, they're already doing it. Digital merch is coming up next. But anyways, going back to the original question, I don't actually know what's going to happen post post COVID. I just feel like the collectors who are at the top of their game and who have been doing this for years nothing is going to change for them and i still think you're going to have the collectors like me who aren't like in it deep with like 10 20 000 collections but i want to buy myself a nice pair of sneakers every now and then because i i just i just love that feeling of getting it taking out wearing it maybe you see it maybe you compliment it that's priceless to me so i still think it's going to be around and i'm actually interested to see what will happen post covid but i'm betting big on the digital side yeah, no, I, 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 that's fascinating. I, I think digital clothing or digital sneakers is, is definitely going to be a real thing because when you're an avatar yourself, you almost, uh, you can be whoever you want to be, right? Yeah. And so you can express yourself in fundamentally new ways, yep. right? And, and just be as crazy as possible when you're in the digital universe. So, you know, I, I can certainly see that happening as well. I had this like offshoot, I had this like crazy idea of like, you see everything going digital. You talked about digital horses yep. and digital shoes. I had this like wacky idea. I'm just gonna throw it out on the pod <laughs> okay. where it's called digital food. So when you're hungry, instead of eating, you can buy like NFTs of digital food of just like 
of like JPEGs of really delicious food. You can't eat it still, but at least at least you have the picture of it. And like, I wish I could have this because you know, food is a story, right? Let let, let it is. You know, NFTs are all about stories, right? What is the narrative behind those NFTs? I'm just like art. What is the story behind it? Every single meal, every single dish has a story to it. And I'm like, what if you paired the best chefs in the world, uh, you know, culinary sort of expert you know culinary gurus and, yeah. and experts get, got got them to create unbelievable dishes minted those pictures or whatever as nfts and then you could just buy them and then just look at them and just be like i i'm hungry but i have this i know it no. sounds i know it sounds no, no, no. completely absurd but the reason why it would be successful is because it sounds completely absurd the best part about the idea is that it's not it makes no it's sense. No, it's nowhere <laughs> near the bottom of the list of worst ideas. It's actually up high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in my head, I'm like, oh, he might be on to something. That could be like a million dollar idea. Yeah, digital food. That's yeah, what I'm, that's food, what I'm, when you're hungry. Suppress your appetite. Yeah. In the digital world. <laughs> there you go. I'm 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 into it. Well, listen. Um, you know, we 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 chatted about fashion. I I wanted you know want to just ask you what are you excited about in terms of the future? Whether it's creator economy, NFTs. Uh, fashion, like you're at the intersection of all of these things. Um, I, I just want to ask you, in thinking about the future, like what mm -hmm. are you most fat, passionate about? And I'll, I'll sort of give you my take, but what, what are you most passionate about the future? I think there's a lot. It's actually a really good question. You always ask good questions, like thought provoking. Um, creator economy, obviously, I'm high on NFTs, I'm high on, but I'm just, I think I'm just most excited, man, to see like in the next two, three, five years, which individuals are going to like overtake the world mm. and which, you know, who are we going to follow as the roadmap for how to do that? That's like what excites me. Like, you know, I follow Mr. Beast every single day. Like what this guy up to next, what is he doing? Cause I feel like he's just creating this roadmap and he always shares the knowledge, which I love about him about how to do what he's doing, how to build it, what not to do, what to do. And that's what I'm most excited about that pairing with everything digital, which I don't want to like harp on so much, yeah, but yeah, I know I think next five years, man, like, who knows what the digital world is going to be like? Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that as well in terms of the individuals, yeah. and it goes back to the creator economy, and and I, that's why I was like really interested in seeing what's happening with BitClout. I don't know if you saw the BitClout. I don't know what your opinion is on BitClout, by the way. I know I was going to give my take on what, what yeah. the future was be, but uh, I wanted to get to that really quickly. Uh, BitClout, uh, have you been following it? I, I followed it. I've, I've been on the side. I've seen everything. And it's like so interesting to me because it's it's it, they're trying to do the opposite of what um, creator coins are doing, kind of like roll and rally. It's like almost the opposite. It's like, and the way they're doing it is like, hey, we own this, we own you, but you can come claim it if you want and, and yeah, make money. And just just to clarify to the audience in terms of what BitCloud yeah, is all point. about, Big 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 Cloud is a site where. They've basically, you can have your own coin and people can trade, uh, they yeah. can buy or sell your coin. And it's almost like a decentralized Twitter where, you know, you can, you can based on, you know, great things that happen with you, um, you know, you know, somebody might buy, oh, Sean just launched a new, you know, streetwear line. Yeah. Oh, okay, let's buy, let's buy, buy Sean, let's buy Sean's coin. The interesting hack that BitCloud had was, they like got like the 150 most popular people and they said, we have your coin come collect it. And actually there are some per people they that went and, and collected their own coin guys like Chamath or, yep. you know, so uh, yeah, th th that's the background, but you thought it was interesting. Yeah. I actually want to hear what you, what your thought is. Is it you, did you claim it? Were you on there checking in? I, yeah, no, I, I definitely, so I, I, my first purchase with Chamath coin, not because he's just a, right. a brown guy, but I, I've been on Chamath for a while because I think he's, he's, he's brilliant. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. And I, I love that he's had this like resurgence over the last like two yeah. years where everyone's talking about Chamath. Uh, but no, I, I, I bought Chamath uh, coin and I haven't bought anybody else's coin. I, I, I feel like I'm not there yet with it. I, I see, I definitely love the idea of yeah. it. I think there's something about whether it's the UI or the design, the UX. To me, it still feels a bit it's not there. scammy or feels not real yet. It's not. And polished. I feel like also because I don't know who the founder is. I, yeah. I think there's like a group of people. I don't understand like who's behind it. To me, there is something there that I am not completely bought into yet. 
Uh, but I love the concept. I've been thinking about it for years. How do you mm -hmm. invest in people? And I know this is like everyone's been thinking about how do you invest in yep. people. I'm sure there's people in your life that you're like, I wish I just had a piece of you. And this is finally, uh, this has been the way to do this. And I've been even thinking myself, how do I create a fund just for creators? And I never had the idea on how to do it until now. Now I understand what it is. It's through coins, it's through social tokens, it's through NFTs. This is how you actually invest in people instead of like having like an income share agreement or, or something old school like that. This is the way of doing it. Yep. Um, and so that's why I find it's super fascinating. I'm, I'm gonna follow it. 100%, I think we're both the same that we're following anything that's coming out, NFTs, yeah. to get a better understanding of it. And I think I'm on the same page as you was like, I checked it out. I was like, do we get this for dev? Do we, do we wait? I'm like, let's just wait and just see kind of what happens over the next few months. Does it fizzle out? Cause when it first came out, I don't know if you know, it got shut down, right? No, I didn't know that. It got shut down. So it, that was like the red flag. I was like, okay. Cause I was trying to sign up and it was shut down. I was like, oh, this is probably a scam. And then people were on Twitter were like, oh, this is a scam, blah, blah, blah. But then it came back and it's having like a mini resurgence. So I think over the next few months, maybe towards summer, we'll see how real it is. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I know it's, it's fascinating, fascinating to see where it's going to go because, um, you know, it's just like Bitcoin or it's just like NFT. NFTs, the more that you have people in it, the more that people believe in it, yep. the more value, uh, the more valuable it will be. Uh, and so I think the more that you see, you know, whether it's celebrities jump on board on BitCloud, yep. you know, it's going to create uh, more momentum for it. So I, I, I'm excited for it. And maybe somebody will come back to this podcast and be like, yeah, those guys are talking about BitCloud, and I heard it there. And now it's like, you now know, it's massive. Now it's like a massive company, yeah. right? Which, which is, uh, I'm sure that's what happened to Bitcoin and other things. Like somebody, some guy was talking about it on a podcast, and then you Seriously? know, it's just kind of, uh, yeah. So I'm the, the 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 thing that I'm excited about is the intersection between the creator economy, crypto, um, NFTs, and just like, uh, just the creative revolution that's that's what i'm really excited about you know a lot of people ask me you know what do you think the next wave of innovation is and i i actually don't think it's you know people say ar or vr or ar like i think it's the create i think it's the human because all this technology has become a lot more commoditized mm -hmm. and it's really about us becoming um finally being able to monetize our own craft and i feel like the ability to build an audience to build a community um, it, it's just, we're just like starting it. I totally agree. I think bridging the gap of like, uh, the whole digital world, cryptocurrency, blockchain to the creators. That's what everyone's saying. It's like a creator revolution. It's like, yeah, we don't actually know what's coming yet, but all the tools are out there to go and seize it, to go build it on flow on whatever you want to do. Like you got to just know how to navigate and how to, uh, build and put something out there which is exciting as creators. It's amazing, man. Well, listen, uh, you know, we had a really great conversation on the future of, uh, yep. so excited to be back on this experimental sort of like setup. Uh, it's not fully set up, but by the time you're on like the hundredth episode, oh, this is gonna look, uh, it's gonna be crispy this is gonna look unbelievable. Yeah, so I, totally I wanna thank you. Uh, if you haven't su subscribed yet, hit this button right now. You can, you can subscribe to this channel and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Likewise, thank you so much, my man. Thank you.